What's up, Panthers? Welcome to FIU's Panther Talk, the podcast striving to highlight student voices from around the world. And right here in the 305, there are fully online Panthers. Soon, you'll hear from your main host, Michael Wright, innovator and educator here with us at FIU, and your newly elected FIU online senator, Ellie Ferreira, with a passion for criminal justice, roller skating, and sharing her life with others as a mother and wife. In this episode, they're diving into imposter syndrome. Is it a myth? If it is real, is there a way out of the hole for those who find themselves there? All right. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I am super pumped uh, to have the opportunity. That's to Miami, right? Putting super in front of something. It's like, (laughs) I I can't get rid of it. It's just that or like, it's like, oh, my goodness. Well, uh, our I'm I'm not super pumped. I'm just pumped. Uh, I'm excited to have the, an opportunity to speak with uh, our newest. I'm going to just call you Senator Senator <laughs> Ellie uh, to spend some time with her to uh, hear from her. And, and I, if you wouldn't mind, can you give us a little intro? What's your maybe? What was your campaign slogan to get you elected? Senator of Ellie. course. Well, I am Ellie Ferreira. Um, I'm a criminal justice major here at FIU. Um, my slogan, I wouldn't say like a solid slogan, but what I really was saying was vote Ellie the choice for your voice. That's what I was doing on okay. a lot of my um, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's excellent. And, and you're the senator of, I, I guess, the student senator for on for online students for can you Correct. kind of give me yeah. a little bit more like of course yeah so i am actually the only senator for our fiu online students okay yes. and I, i'm i'm curious right as someone who works in in online uh, an online student myself are, are there some what what do you think are the big things that you hope to i don't know to see to accomplish what is the what is what do you think is going to be the loudest voice that you get to speak for, or what would a loudest voice say? Yeah, of course. I definitely am going to just try to promote um, inclusivity with our online students so that they feel just as connected as regular students or. Um, on campus students, I remember thinking that I was so excited for college mm. and then COVID happened and I had to revert to online schooling, but that was like the best thing because then I realized that FIU has an online program. And when you think online school, it's sometimes kind of like, uh, but I'm not really like involved in school. At least that's what I thought. I was like, oh, well, I'm not really gonna be as involved as I wanna go to like have all the fun. And I learned very quickly at FIU that there's so many resources to really get in touch um, with the student body and just really feel connected. Um, I'm part of student government now. I'm um, one of the ambassadors, our online ambassadors, so I feel very connected. Uh, that's definitely probably going to be the main thing that I'm going to focus on in my term. Excellent. Excellent. I appreciate you saying that. I, I like how you talked about uh, connectivity and even right the authentic experience of, am I a real college student if I'm online or, or what that is? Um, that actually flows really nice into a topic that I, I think is going to be the topic that we're going to talk about today, I think is ridiculously relevant um, for many of our students. And one that, I mean, it hit, it hits home personally. And I, I wonder, Ellie, if you have any uh, kind of relationship with that. And, and, and the topic we're going to kind of center most of our conversation on today is going to be the the idea the topic of uh imposter syndrome and um you know i i want to jump into your definition of it um or kind of your just general thoughts um and i've got some very targeted kind of questions to help explore this um but i'd like to share before we, we we do that a definition from uh, Gil Corkendale from the Harvard Business Review for the definition of imposter syndrome. Um, and, and Gil defines it as a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persist despite evident success. And I think Senator Ellie, which I'm going to call you the entire <laughs> podcast, because it's, that's just what you are. And we're so glad to have you here representing our students is 
do you can you speak to ever having felt anything like this uh like imposter syndrome and and and, and maybe if you, if you could even give us an example of a time um or, or space or or types of things that happen where you feel uh, like this may happen for you of course um i'll probably say that i am in my imposter syndrome era right now oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> i um I was never really a person that was so, I would see myself involved in school so much. So like hearing that now, I kind of think, and it's like, well, what do you mean you're not that involved in school? Like you are in student government, you're an ambassador, you are talking to people constantly. And that's what I feel even now that I won my election, I feel like, okay, well, it's not that big of a deal because it's just, it's just like online school or it's not that big of a deal because it's not, it's just school stuff. And it's like, oh. it's not. And I had to, no. I had to like start getting like reverting from that because I was like, no, this is super important being able to advocate for people because these are things that I want to do with my life. The reason I want to be an attorney is I want to advocate for people that can't advocate for themselves or feel that they can't because I felt like that before. Yeah. And, now having that voice, I definitely um, feel like I'm getting out of that, but can relate. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, and that's powerful, right? Finding your almost motivation to circumvent that imposter feeling, those feelings by putting on the voice and the initiatives of, of others that you're championing uh, for. I, you know, th there's uh, our producer and I had a conversation about a really great documentary. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this documentary on Netflix. It's called um, The Social Dilemma. Are you are you familiar with it? No, I haven't seen that one. Well, it's it's a really great watch. Um, it will change your life when it comes to looking at your phone. Now I like triple check. I'm like, wait, what am I doing here? Let me, let me relax. <laughs> we have a quote from the documentary that I'd like to lead us into our, our next conversation. Um, and, 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 it, and it reads, it says, um, we curate our lives around this perceived sense of perfection because we get rewarded in these short-term signals, hearts, likes, thumbs up, right? Speaking to, to social media. And we conflate that with value. We conflate that with truth. And instead, what really is, it's fake, right? Brittle popularity, that's short-term. Instead, oh, and, and leaves you even more, and admit it, vacant and empty, before you did it because then it forces you into this vicious cycle where you're like what's the next thing i need to do now because i need it back so you know really what i think our question is here and what we're trying to explore is you know this documentary talks about these feelings of, of valid validation and and kind of going to the light and th that gives me value um but you know, I guess, can you relate to similar feelings of what this documentary names as imposter syndrome while using social media? Yeah, of course, especially um, in this day and age, social media is such a big thing. Everybody has an Instagram, everybody has a Facebook and beliefs, like something that mm -hmm. you are connected somewhere in the world. And it's a little scary, <laughs> like it's kind of scary. Everything is always online. A lot of the classes that I was taking um, in my beginning at FIU, um, a lot of them are communication classes. And we, I did a lot of projects on social media and it's just scary how people are so desensitized with social media one, I will always say that. It's like you see something and it's like, I don't know, people don't really think it's that big anymore. Like you see yeah. something crazy, like um, a school shooting or something like that. And it's like, it, we're kind of expecting it. And mm -hmm. we have so much access to different social media and that's like on the more news side of it, but like just people in general, it's like you're posting a picture and I have a thousand likes. Oh my God, you get like a rush from like a thousand likes. And it's like, I yep. want to post something else that's going to get so many more likes. And oh my God, my followers are going up and yeah. yeah. You know, uh, earlier you were talking about, um, we, we were talking, you know, before about like a, a parent and, and what that means and, and all those items. And I, I, so I recently, well, I guess not recently anymore. It's like two years. Uh, my wife and I decided to, be, decided to become foster parents. And so we have teenagers in our home and my, my, my wife's an educator. I'm an educator. And we have conversations with our kids all the time, Ellie, about knowledge, things that they know. And they're getting all of the things that they know from TikTok. And I, you know, 
I at first I was like, don't be a viejito, Michael. Like, okay, this is a new place <laughs> where knowledge comes from. That's fine. That's cool. But then they would sell me things like, oh, look at this person who's just talking about insects. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Do they have a degree in etymology or is it just somebody who looked up something and is putting out a video telling you what, you, you know, you hope is true? And so, I, you know, I, 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 you're, you're speaking about news. You're speaking about our desensitized. But also you say something that I think is so alluring from social media. It's access. It makes us feel like we have more. We see more. Um, and and I, I think what that quote is speaking to is how dangerous almost too much access goes into ways that we, we cannot control or we cannot predict. Um, you know, th there's a... There was an article, another Harvard Business Review article. We were on a, on I guess a, a binge uh, reading all of those, and in the article, it was very specific about um, who imposter syndrome impacts. Right. So you talked about how people are getting their news from that, and we see that impacting young ages and kind of middle age um, adults right now, and, and, and all throughout the world. Uh, but in particular, it spoke to imposter syndrome's relationship to women, women in the professional space. And I'm, I'm curious on your thoughts. Do you feel like, um, in this article, it was titled, Stop Telling Women They Have Imposter Syndrome. In this article, it, it says the problem isn't, right, that women in particular are, are going through imposter syndrome. The problem is the environments that they're in is making them in particular feel targeted uh, and and insufficient. And so I wonder if you, you know, in your experience, in your conversations, um, and, and even in your study, in your field, do you feel like imposter syndrome stems from bias and exclusion rather than just feelings of self-doubt, right? Like I just doubting myself. Absolutely. Um, I was going to use my field as a huge example. I want to be an attorney. I am a Hispanic female that wants to be an attorney in America, which mm -hmm. luckily means that it can be done. Yes. But means that I'm studying and I'm thinking of what schools to go to, where I would want to work. And immediately on my list of things that I need to think about are I might get paid less because I'm a woman. I might have to work a little bit harder because I'm a woman. Um, people are not going to want to hear me out so much because I'm a woman. And it's sad to say because there's been so many times that I'm in a room and I have so many ideas and I feel that now I'm flourishing a little bit more in my professional per personality um, mm. because I'm getting a little bit more confidence, but I would have that lesser confidence because it's kind of like, I already don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm here to learn and I, I, I have like information of value to provide at least for someone who wants to learn. Right. Yeah. But sometimes it's not looked at that. Sometimes it's look at, looked at like, okay, just wait, or this is not for you, or we're not talking to you. Oh. Like, And that definitely would say, I would say that with attorneys, with doctors, with, and it's not just because we're, it's, it's just our self-doubt all the time. Um, but I would think it's the people around you too. Like they don't, I'm getting a true story. When I first said that I wanted to be an attorney, mm -hmm. there was people in, that would ask my husband, are you okay with her wanting to do that? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm trying people, to hide my expressions. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I just... People would ask my husband like, oh, and are you okay with that? Why are you asking him? And luckily my husband is like, of course I'm okay with her doing that. Like she's, she's awesome. Like what? Like he's not, he's not thinking about it, but then me, I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, of course they're going to ask you that. Like, you're a man and you want to be with a woman who wants to be something that is a male dominated field. Oh. Um, luckily he's super supportive. Love him. Yeah. But it's just crazy how that is like, just a question. Like, why are you asking somebody that? Like, would you ask a woman like, Oh, are you okay with your husband wanting to be a chef? Like, and even that sounds weird. Like, because it's like, I yeah. don't know. It, ludicrous is, is, and I, I, I you know, I, I think even in my reaction to it, I, I identified my own, you know, my own privilege. Like that's a, that's a crazy thing. But for someone who, you know, doesn't represent that particular community, of course it's crazy to me because in my lived experience of someone, I don't get asked that as, as, as much as, as you might. And, and I think that, you know, that 
life is complicated, right? I think we agree on that. Life is complicated. And this, this particular situation, this particular um, issues of imposter syndrome, I think people have felt, people have known about, maybe, you know, there's been some communication about, but I keep on thinking, you know, I, I'm a, I have a confession to make. I'm a millennial and I'm proud of it. Is, is very, you know, some people don't, they don't know how they feel about my community, but, you know, I'm, I'm just here to say it. But as a millennial, right, I've experienced all kinds of regular disruptions, right? They removed Toys R Us from us. Blockbuster went away. Um, but we also saw things like, you know, the internet and and smartphones and, and what that kind of looked like and meant for jobs and other items. Uh, 9-11 changed travel. Uh, gasoline road trips was like a... You know, but something huge that uh, as a millennial, I expected to happen disruptively, but I didn't know what I was getting was the COVID pandemic. And I, I think something that, you know, we've seen, right, the, the, the research and the data is out there is as there have been more kind of social situations that have kept us apart, right, the social distancing mm-hmm. from the pandemic, it seems like there's been a rise in imposter syndrome and a rise in things like road rage, right? And and depleting what little empathy or listening or um, like knowing how to have difficult conversations used to bring us. And so, I, you know, I, I think the idea that I'm trying to get to here is, you know, I think what we're noticing, what the data is showing us, and, and maybe COVID has has a lot to do with this is, you know, generations of the past, they're seeming to forget how to empathize and interact with others while coming generations are becoming more, I don't know, I, I think the term that the, our producer used was uh, digitally pacified because they haven't had an opportunity to practice these skills as much. And so, you know, I, I'm curious as someone who has experienced imposter syndrome, someone who's thought about this, someone who has goals, who's our senator, right? Senator Ellie, you know, how do you feel that, I don't know, learning to have uncomfortable conversations, how, how, I guess, what have you done to sharpen those skills or to where, I mean, as an attorney, I feel like Having difficult conversations is the number one thing you're going to want to eventually work to. What are some things that you've done to help learn or or navigate that? And has that been easy, difficult? You could share. Yeah, absolutely. With COVID, like you said, a lot of people kind of have reverted. I feel like just me going to the grocery store sometimes or me going to places that are a little bit too packed, I just get kind of like the ick. Like, I'm like, ah, I don't want to be here. Like, I want to leave. Like, um, but it is true. Everybody wants to text nowadays. Nobody can pick up the phone. If I pick up the phone, I'm a weirdo. Like, yeah. I called... Um, I would call people that call a doctor's office to make an appointment. Or the other day, actually, I went to the dentist's office to try to make an appointment. There's a dentist across the street from my apartment. Like, I can walk there. So Uh I was like, oh, let me just pop in. I went to the grocery store, which is right next door. Let me just pop in, really. The look that that lady gave me when I came in, just like, oh, can I make an appointment? Like, and she was like, a what? Like, what? Why? What do you mean? You can... We usually what? do it online. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I was just here. Like, I just wanted to see if I could. And she's like, yeah. well, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can. You can. Like, hold, just hold on. And it's like she had to, like, gather herself to be like, okay, I have a person in front of me that I have to set them up. It was weird. I was like, this is weird. Like, isn't it crazy, too? We were, like, separated for so long. I was missing people. I was like, I want to meet a stranger. I, I remember, like, 2020, 2021. But yet, now that we are capable for the most part it almost seems like we've like pushed farther away that it's really it really is and and that's why right so coming back to the point how important do you feel learning how to have difficult or uncomfortable conversations are for where we need to go where we're going or or is it fine let's just hashtag no new friends we're just kind of (laughs) 
this is our, our, our new existence. No, I def I definitely agree that people just need to learn how to talk again. Like people don't want to have those face to face conversations, even just FaceTiming or Zoom or something like that. Sometimes that's uncomfortable and people are like, let me keep my camera off the whole entire time. And it's just like we're on the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I'm guilty of being on my camera off. I like being on my camera off sometimes because I feel like I'm safe. Like, why am I safe? We're still just on the Internet. Like, yeah. this thing. but it's not face to face. I feel like um it's just really important to practice those skills because people are just losing that the importance of like impromptu like i feel you have that buffer when you're texting like yeah. i can think about what i'm gonna say right now and it's like now people don't know what to say anymore like in person and it's yes. like what are we gonna, what are we doing <laughs> like what are we I, gonna do i love how you said the the, the power or the importance of impromptu right sometimes those are the best conversations or insights or you know i, I feel like a, a lot of times something that impromptu could be synonymous for is authenticity absolutely yes right you can tell um, a lot about someone's you're, unplanned you're being real. yes yeah of course you're in front of them you're in front of me when you're asking me a question in front of me either i can just not say anything but my face is going to tell you what i'm feeling my mm -hmm. face is gonna, my body language is going to show you how i feel you're making me uncomfortable or i don't really know how to answer that question or i'm so excited to answer that question like i'm eager to jump at it um and that's something that you can't really get from just texting and you can i guess with 10 emojis but not really <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, another way to communicate that in texting is um, effective punctuation. I know sometimes, right, I'll ask my wife, like, hey, do you want something from Chipotle? She'll be like, yeah. But if she says yes, period, I messed up, right? Like, there's something yes. that I did there, and I don't know what it is, but there's too much good grammar. There. But <laughs> I, I, the context, yep. the value of, 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 of expressions, the authenticity behind it, um, you know, I, I guess... So look, we, we're talking about the, the lack of these uncomfortable conversations. We could even, you know, I think you even mentioned that it, it, it's uncomfortable, it's difficult. But if you can talk to me a little bit about, right, we said it's hard. So if it's so hard, what is the value of doing it? What do you, what would you like to tell others that, look, this may be uncomfortable or this may be hard, but this is why you should do it for in relation to relationships or in relation to career, what is your advice for why it's worth getting involved and learning and doing more when it comes to difficult and uncomfortable conversations? Right. Well, I doing having meetings and talking to people is how I got into the position that I am right now academically. Um, I wouldn't a year ago, you could not pay me to go and, talk and say, oh, I'm going to run in an election or I'm going to interview, do a face to face interview and talk about mm -hmm. myself, which is what I did like to become an ambassador. So you miss out on opportunities when you don't really put yourself out there. Um, I really think that's the best way to think about it is, um, you what is the saying that they say like you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take yep so it's like if you don't even the, try how do you know yeah i think that was uh the office uh michael they the boss yeah. that, the original uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely so you'll miss out on those opportunities and and you won't even know it because i could say me putting out on a paper what i am i look qualified but if I'm meeting somebody, I know that I'm going to give that factor of I love what I want to do or I love what I'm trying to do here. And I have that passion. And you can't really relay that on text sometimes. You have to show that. Like, people see that. And people can tell real, real recognize real. <laughs> real <laughs> recognize real. I like that should be your next campaign slogan. Real right. recognize real. I like that. <laughs> Oh man, Ellie, th Senator Ellie, this has been an outrageously uh, informative, uh, helpful conversation. I'm curious. Um, let's say there's one thing you wanted to to leave us with. One thing you you know you've you've experienced, you've walked through a lesson, you've learned a story that has been really formative for you. If there was one thing that you're like, hey, Michael, I want to make sure that everybody at least hears this thing. Um, what, what do you think that would be? And you can take some time. I know I just dropped a kind of an existential question. It's super, uh, big, but however you'd like, whatever you'd like to, to leave us with, what, what, what would you like to, 
I really would like to say, um, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I thought when I had my um, kid that I'm not going to go back to school. I'll be fine. I can't do it. It's going to be hard. Like, oh, my God, and now everything's online. Like, how am I even going to keep up with this? Like, every time I would give myself every single excuse on why I can't do it, and it held me back a little bit, but truly just do it. (laughs) Do what you want to do. Like we can do whatever we want in this life. So you don't want to sit here thinking like, oh, I could have done this and I didn't do it. I've um, received so many great opportunities just by believing in myself and just like, who cares? Like, just try it. What, what's the worst that can happen? Like, especially if it's for your personal and self-development, um, just do it. Get out there and get it done. Just try it. Don't be scared. <laughs> Outstanding. Well said. And hopefully Nike will not come in and try to take that copyright. Yeah, we'll, have to, we'll have to look that one over. Sorry okay. about that. <laughs> we'll take that out. I mean, when you're an attorney, you can make sure that we're protected in all those yeah. things, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Senator, for spending time with us. Uh, and thank you for your insights. Really looking forward to seeing all the great things you'll be advocating for on behalf of our online students. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait to really be the voice for everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. As a reminder to stay in the know of all things FIU Online, there are virtual workshops with our Counseling and Psychological Services Department, covering topics such as navigating imposter syndrome and coping with any kind of stressful emotions. You all know it's exam season, so look into their drop-in to drop the stress virtual sessions And don't forget to make the most of ongoing networking virtual experiences that bring together minds from around the world by reaching out to our career and talent development department. Connect with us for more details about these events on pantherconnect.fiu.edu. Thank you for listening to this month's episode on FIU's Panther Talk, hosted by Michael Wright, narrated by myself, Julia Acevedo, and edited in-house by our FIU Online content development team. Until the next episode, Panthers, pause up.